then you try to make zinc iodide, right? So, and at the end, you try to isolate that zinc iodide and you operate the water and you get the product come out, right? So, something like that. So, uh, whatever you got by uh, doing the experiment, that is called the actual yield. Uh, and whatever you got by calculation using the limiting reagent, that is called the theoretical yield, right? So, if you divide the actual yield by theoretical yield, so actual is coming from the uh, experiment and theoretical is coming from the limiting reagent calculation. So that's theoretical. And then, uh, then you multiply by 100 and that gives you the percent yield. Okay? So percent yield is always uh, less than 100 percent. I mean, sometimes it can be more than 100 percent if you are if we are bad at doing experiment. But uh, actual yield is smaller than theoretical yield because there are a lot of uh, error we make uh, during the experiment. <coughs> sometimes the chemical are um, impure. Uh, sometimes uh, this chemical are impure. Sometimes byproducts are formed. Sometimes let's say. You are trying to make a zinc iodide and that dissolve in water. But what happens is zinc hydroxide is formed and this uh, remains at the bottom of uh, this guy with the zinc here. So the, this is called the byproduct. If, if we are making the zinc iodide, <laughs> if we don't put that acetic acid solution there, that it drop, you will form this one and you will get very small amount of the zinc iodide. And this is called the byproduct. Make sense? The byproduct, uh, if something the, uh, we want to make does not form, right? Some something else is formed, so that reduces the uh, actual yield. Make sense? So, so like that. And incomplete reaction. Sometimes it happens to incomplete reaction. For example, when you are doing this reaction, so you are setting and setting, and you are using the water color here. But if you stop stop the reaction there, when it is still some red color here, you did not complete the reaction. Make sense? So the incomplete reaction reduces the, the product amount. Good? So go to the next one. So let's do some calculation here. Uh, what is the percentage yield of ammonia? I mean, I could I could do the zinc iodide here from the lab, but I didn't put that from uh, there. So this is from the book, I think. So what is the percent yield of ammonia? If, uh, if uh, the 50 gram of yield of nitrogen and hydrogen react to from 30 gram of ammonia. So let's write the reaction first here. So this is nitrogen, and then we are reacting with the hydrogen, and we are making ammonia here. And uh, let's balance this one. So I put two here. Hydrogen becomes six, so I put three here. So hydrogen becomes six. Nitrogen two. Nitrogen two. Now it is balanced, right? First of all, we need to balance the reaction. Now it is talking about the gram. So since it is talking about the gram, we cannot use the gram. We need to convert that into moles first, right? So we take 50 gram of nitrogen and 50 gram of hydrogen. So let's convert that 50 gram of nitrogen first. So 50 gram of nitrogen we have there. So the mole relation is this one. So one mole of nitrogen of nitrogen is equal to 28 gram, right? So this is the periodic table. Uh, nitrogen is 14. Two nitrogen gives you uh, uh, 28, right? So uh, one mole of nitrogen is equal to 28 grams. So I need two mole. So I put this gram down here, 28 grams, and mole up here. So gram, gram cancels. So 50 by 28, uh, whatever comes to calculator, that is uh, uh, 50 by, so that's uh, 50 by 28, right? Did I do calculation here or no? Uh, probably not. So here we have 8.3 moles of nitrogen. So if I convert that one, uh, 5 by 3, uh, 
Uh, here or not? So I could do uh, quickly here. So let's do this one. So 20 by uh, how many mole of uh, nitrogen we have here? So this is 50 divided by 28. So I have 1.78 uh, 1.78 uh, moles of nitrogen. Moles of nitrogen. Into right. 1.78 moles. So, uh, of nitrogen, how many moles of hydrogen I have? So, uh, again, hydrogen I have 50 grams. So, let's go ahead and do the calculation. 50 grams hydrogen. So, one mole of hydrogen is equal to uh, this. So, one mole of hydrogen. One mole of hydrogen is equal to two. Two, right? One hydrogen is one. Two hydrogen is two, right? One mole of hydrogen is equal to two. So, 50 gram of hydrogen. Uh, I think that I might have made a mistake there. So let's do this. One mole of hydrogen is two gram. So 50 gram of hydrogen will be, I need a mole. So I put mole part up and uh, gram part down, 20 grams. So two grams. So that is 25 moles. So hydrogen, I have, oh, I did right. So 25 moles. So look here, hydrogen, I have 25 moles. So 50 grams means 25 moles. Uh, now, I don't know which one is a limiting reagent, so I need to find the limiting reagent from this uh, uh, this reaction part. So let's find the limiting reagent. Uh, uh, for three moles, I need one mole, right? Look here. For three moles, if I have three moles hydrogen, I need one mole nitrogen, right? For 25 moles, how many moles of nitrogen I will need? So I will put X here, and I just solve for that X. So that is x divided by 1 is equal to 25 by 3. So x is equal to 1 goes here. 25 multiplied by 1 divided by 3 would be uh, 8.3 moles, right? 8.3 moles? So yes, 8.3 moles. So look here. So 8.3 moles of uh, hydro, uh, nitrogen I need. So I need, I need I need 8.3 moles. I'm just calculating that, right? But how much I have? I have uh, 1.78 moles. So I need 8.3 moles. I have, I have, I have uh, 1.78 moles nitrogen here. So which one is limiting? So I need this. I have this. So I need a lot here. I'm not. I don't have enough, right? Make sense? So nitrogen is the limiting reagent. Now I found that nitrogen is the limiting reagent. Have you got that? So 1.78. So I found this one. So I put that 1.78 here. 1.78 mole here because that is limiting reagent and that is important. So from limiting reagent, now I need to uh, calculate the ammonia. Got it? So, uh, so this is the limiting reagent. So what I do is 1.78 divided by one. Uh, I need to calculate the ammonia here. So I put X here. I can put Y. It doesn't matter. So X by two. So you multiply that. X equals two. Two comes here and divide by one. So uh, how much is there? Uh, two multiplied by 1.78 gives 3.56. 3.56 moles. Moles ammonia I could find, right? First of all, I need to find the limiting reagent, and using the limiting reagent, I need to calculate the uh, number of uh, moles of ammonia. Now, I'm going to convert that number of moles of ammonia to gram. So let's convert that 3.56 mole to gram here. Look at 3.56 moles. Uh, so how do I convert the gram, uh, moles to gram? So ammonia. So now ammonia is uh, this is 14, 15, 16, 17. So one mole ammonia. One mole ammonia equals to 17 grams, right? 17 grams. Now you convert that to gram. So that's 8.3 multiplied by. So this is mole. <coughs> so this is mole. And then I put gram uh, up here, 17 grams down here, 
So mole mole calcium, so 8.3 multiplied by 70 gram. So that many gram of ammonia I can form using the limiting reagent. Make sense? So uh, like that. So how much is that one? So that gives me 60.52 gram. 60.52 gram. 60.52 gram of uh, ammonia. I can make using the limiting reagent, but can I make 60 gram? No, this is a theoretical amount, right? I I identify the limiting reagent, then using the limiting reagent, I calculate the <laughs> product and I found that, oh, I should be having 60 gram if I do this reaction. Yeah, but I have not done the reaction. So, but when I do the reaction and isolate the ammonia, I found 30 gram of ammonia is found. So that question is asking, then you, you found, uh, look here, 30 gram of ammonia, you could only form 30 gram of ammonia, right? But I could make 60 gram. If I really, really do the good, I could make 60 gram, right? So the percent yield is equal to, so the percent yield, percent yield is equal to, uh, I could make 60 gram, so that's a theoretical. So I just 60.5 to 60.5 is a theoretical yield that I found using the uh, limiting reagent, right? Now, uh, but I could only make 30 gram when I do the experiment. Yeah, so 30 gram. And now I multiply by 100, so that's about 50%. So I only got 50% of the, uh, the yield. I should be expecting 60, uh, 60 gram. I only got 30 gram, right? So that's, uh, uh, that's for the, uh, but when you do the zinc iodide, you don't have to find the limiting reagent because uh, you just uh, mix zinc and iodine, and iodine color just disappears, and you know the okay, iodine is the limiting reagent. So that's much easier in the lab. Yeah? So, like that. So, I said 49.5 is almost 50%. Yeah? Experimentally, I've seen among 30 grams here. Uh, and that uh, just we calculated the amount of the product we should be expecting that is 60 gram, uh, 60 gram here using the limiting reagent, and then we divide that and uh, we divide that and we got 49.5. Yeah, like that. So, so this is one uh, question. Another question about the uh, uh, about quantitative analysis. So. Let's do this one. So, uh, so, I told you why uh, we are expecting less product uh, than we should be getting because the chemical are easier, we don't complete the reaction, uh, or something like that, right? So, uh, let's say uh, we bought a chemical that the uh, a sodium sulfate. So this is a bottle that has a sodium sulfate, NaCl4. So uh, we did that, that reaction. So sodium sulfate uh, reacting with the barium chloride. So sodium sulfate, Na2SO4 reacting with the barium chloride, and you get barium sulfate plus uh, sodium chloride, like this one. And if you look at the uh, uh, solubility chart, barium sulfate is insoluble compound so that it goes at, at the bottom of the reaction vessel and we filter out and we dry and then we measure the barium sulfate mass how much barium sulfate is yeah so then that's what they call the uh, quantitative analysis now it is balanced so it's not balanced here so let's put two here now it's balanced the question is saying uh this one this sodium sulfate, when we buy, it's impure. So it's 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 uh, so let's say uh, maybe about uh, ninety percent pure. So ninety percent purity, meaning that if you take hundred gram out of this one, only ninety gram is uh, sodium sulfate. Other ten gram could be some water, some uh, some other salt, some something else. Yeah, so something like this. So what is the purity of this one uh, chemical? We can. Uh, test in our laboratory by using this equation. So we just take some amount of this one and react with the barium chloride uh, and we make the barium sulfate so it doesn't dissolve in water so it's just uh, 
that sits at the bottom of the beaker. When we do the reactor, it sits in the bottom of the beaker this part. And we take this to the oven and we dry this one and isolate the barium sulfate and go to the balance and how much barium sulfate we get and we, we measure there in gram. Yeah, just like how we measure the zinc iodide in lab number six. Yeah. So uh, it is saying 0.498 gram of impure sodium sulfate taken and reacted to barium chloride according to this reaction. 0.541 of the barium sulfate was produced. So this guy is a very pure. So the zinc iodide at the end you made in lab six is a very pure we consider. Yeah. So barium sulfate is very pure. So how much we make the uh, barium uh, sulfate? 5.541 gram. So 0 0.541 gram. So you can convert this uh, gram to mole. So in here, one mole of barium sulfate is equal to 233.4 grams. So, if you divide this by this number, you get the number of mole of barium sulfate. So, I got 2.31 10 to the power 2.31 multiplied 10 to the power uh, minus 3 moles of this one. Yeah. So, this gram I just converted 0.541 uh, gram. I divide by this number and I get that this number. Yeah. So, that's the number of moles of the barium sulfate. By now, I think you already know how to convert a gram to mole, right? So like that. Now, to produce this much barium sulfate, how much sodium sulfate I need? The pure sodium sulfate, that we need to calculate. So here is why. So I'm going to find this x here. Yeah? So that one is the impure. That five, uh, this one, uh, 498 gram is a impure. So I'm not writing that there. That's the impure thing, right? So that X is, uh, if sodium sulfate is very pure, I will need X gram of, uh, uh, X mole of sodium sulfate to make 2.31 to the power minus three moles of uh, barium sulfate, right? So like that. So let's take the ratio, X by one, X by one is equals to this number 2.31 to the power minus three by, here is also one. So, so X is equals to, 2.31 into the power minus 3 moles of moles of pure sodium sulfate I will need, right? Okay, just like that. Now we need to convert this into gram. So how to convert it into gram? So convert that into gram by using uh, there is a 1 mole of sodium sulfate equals to 142. So put that factor just to cancel the moles. So uh, gram, I need gram, so I put 142 gram in up and then uh, one more down here one more down so more more cancel so 142 multiply by this number will give you uh, grams so that is uh, uh, where is the gram uh, convert to gram and that gives you 0 0.329 gram here so i uh, i multiply this one with 142 and i get this gram there point zero point three uh, to nine gram to nine gram of sodium sulfate. Make sense? So this is the that much pure amount of sodium sulfate. Uh, I should get to make that much barium sulfate, pure barium sulfate. Make sense? Now, since I already know that oh, this is the, this amount is the pure uh, sodium sulfate I need, and I'm taking that much already. So that divided by that is the purity. So zero point. Uh, 329, right? So 0 0.329, 329. So that, if it was pure, I should have taken this much uh, sodium sulfate to make that much barium sulfate, right? But since sodium sulfate is impure, I need to take a lot of sodium sulfate, 4.49. Make sense? So that gives the purity. So this much is this is the pure sodium sulfate I need, but I don't have the pure sodium sulfate, so I take large amount. 0.498 gram. So then you multiply by 100, and whatever number you get, get here, that is the purity of sodium sulfate you have. This is a little bit difficult, yeah? So I put this question in one exam, very few, about five, about 100, one, about five to six people could, could answer this question, yeah? So, like this. So, Divide that by that, and you get the 60, 60 
at 66 percent. So if the sodium sulfate was very, very pure in that bottle, I would just take 0 0.339 gram to make uh, uh, to make 0 0.541 gram of barium sulfate. Since it is impure, I need to take more, right? So that more is 0 0.49. So we finish this kind of problem. Now let's uh, look at the new thing here. So uh, the molarity. So this is another important concept we need to uh, understand. So uh, the course is becoming more easier uh, since you already know how to convert to moles. Probably you already can know how to convert to milliliter to liter. So solution is made uh, in case to express in molarity, so molarity, M-O-L-A-R-I-T-Y, molarity. Molarity is number of moles, moles, moles divided by uh, solution in liter. So this is called a molarity, yeah? So let's say uh, you take uh, 10 grams salt, 10 grams sodium chloride, 10 grams sodium chloride, and you put in the, let's say this is a, 200 or uh, 250 milliliter uh, volumetric flask. Yeah, so this is a volumetric flask, uh, and this is called the they they, they, they have put the, some mark here. You can see the pot mark here. So if you put water from here to here, that is 250 milliliter. Make sense? So you first measure the uh, mass of sodium chloride. You are making the sodium chloride solution in this uh, vessel here. So how much you got here? 10 gram. First of all, you need to convert, if you this formula, you need to convert gram to moles, right? So first you convert into moles. So uh, 10 gram. So how much is uh, one mole of sodium chloride? Let's do the sodium chloride. One mole of, of sodium chloride would be, uh, sodium is 23, look at the periodic table. Sodium is 23, chlorine is 35. So 25, 23 plus 35 will give you 8, 58, so 58 uh, grams. So one mole of sodium chloride is 58 gram, right? Make sense? So now convert the gram uh, to moles. So I'm going to convert this gram to moles. So uh, gram to moles. So you need to move, you need moles. So put mole in upper part and the gram in down part. So that's 58 gram, like this. And then you get this one. So 10 divided by 58 will be, uh, I don't know. So something like so I'm just converting a uh, gram to mole, right? So 10 divided by 58 will be so 10 divided by 58 will be 0 0.172 moles. So this is 0 0.172 moles. Make sense? So you see that? So I measure the 10 gram of uh, sodium chloride and I put in this bottle here. Yeah? So how much is the mole? 0 0.172 moles. So I took 0 0.172 moles there. Now I put water here and then dissolve it and fill the water up to here. So that is 250 ml. Yeah? So I put all down the water here. So I put all the water here and set it and dissolve. And I dump the lot of water and put off to the mark. So that it becomes 250 milliliter, right? But look here, the formula. Formula says number of moles divided by liter. So milliliter cannot be used. We need to convert milliliter to liter. Make sense? So uh, one liter is equals to 1,000 milliliter. 1,000 milliliter. So convert to 250 milliliter to liter. So how, to, how do you convert that? So multiply this in such a way that milliliter goes away and liter uh, remains there, right? So all we do like that. So liter, I need liter. So I put liter in upper part. And I don't need milliliters, so I put the milliliter in down part. So thousand milliliters. Like this. Yeah? So something I don't need, I'm going to put that down, right? So look here. So milliliter, milliliter cancel. So 250 divided by thousand is 0 0.250. I have to do that. Right? So milliliter must be converted to liter. Anything must be converted to liter. Yeah? So, so 250, so it is here 0.250 liter. Look here, in upper part I have mole, down part I have liter. So you divide this by this, 
and you get whatever the number you get that is called the molarity mole divided by liter is called molarity make sense you already know how to convert the gram to uh, moles and you know how to convert the milliliter to liter and then divide moles by the liter and whatever the number you get that's called the molarity yeah molarity so how much molarity is that 0.172 by 0.250 so 0.172 uh, divided by 0.250, which gave me 0.68. So this mol the molarity of the solution is 0.68. So and can we write molarity as m m capital M. Make sense? Like this molarity. It's very, very important. So first of all, you take the salt so in some gram and then convert that gram to moles and then put that in that uh, how many liter flask here and convert that uh, if it is a milliliter convert milliliter to liter and divide the moles by liter and what number you get that's called the molarity so this is the first step to work in chemistry lab if we can't know how to make the molar solution or molarity solution we can't make the solution and we can't start to work right so let's go here so what I just told you there is saying the same thing. Now let's look some problem here. So, so this is the formula. Molarity is equal to moles by liter. So what we do? We convert everything to moles, uh, the, the mass, and then uh, we convert the volumes to a liter and divide uh, uh, divide moles by liter. Look here. U these are 0.395 gram of KMnO4. So uh, that's a gram. 0.395. Zero. So mass is 0.395 gram of uh, KMnO4. Now we need to convert that into the moles. So one mole of KMnO4 is equal to 158. So one mole is equal to 158.034 gram. So convert this gram uh, to moles. So that is. So I need a mole, so I need to put mole up here and a gram down here, 158.034 uh, gram. So gram, gram cancel, so you uh, multiply one and divide by 158 and you get the number of moles. Make sense? So how much is that? So number of moles I got is here, 0 0.0025. So from here I get 0 0.0025. 0 0.0025 moles. moles. And uh, that amount I put in uh, how many liter flasks? So that's 250 ml flask. So I put 0.395 gram of KMnO4 here, and this guy has a 250 milliliter volume, right? Now again, I cannot use the milliliter, I need to convert that into liter, right? Make sense? So how to convert the milliliter to liter? So the conversion factor is this, one liter is equal to thousand milliliters. So put that factor in such a way that milliliter goes away. So to go away the milliliter, I need to put that thousand and then down and then one liter part up. So one liter off. So milliliter, this milliliter, milliliter goes away, and then liter here, 250 multiplied by one divided by thousand give you 0 0.250 uh, liter. Now I got the liter, right? So I convert the mass to mole, the gram to mole, and milliliter to liter, right? And then now I just need to divide that mole with the uh, uh, liter. So molarity M is equal to 0 0.0025 moles divided by uh, 0 0.250 liter. So how much that comes here? That's 0 0.10 molarity. So molarity is 0 0.010. Molar. Make sense? So you measure some mass in gram, divide uh, that with the uh, the molar mass, you will get the number of moles in which vessel you are making the solution. What is the volume of that one? If it is in liter, it's fine. If it is in, in milliliter, convert that milliliter to liter and divide moles by liter, and that's the molarity of the solution you are making. Make sense? So we will be doing this one in, I think, lab number 12, uh, somewhere there. So 
I will take I will take up this guy and I will put uh, how much point three nine five potassium uh, about point three nine five gram of potassium permanent which you came in for here and I put a little bit of water I set it and dissolve it and I dump water up to this mass so that it becomes two hundred fifty milliliters right that's how we make the solution. Right? <coughs> Yeah. So, so if you understand this thing, uh, other thing is pretty easy. We just apply the same formula and uh, keep repeating it. So, five gram of uh, dissolve five gram of uh, nickel chloride six H two in enough water to make two hundred fifty milliliter of the solution. Yeah. So calculate the molarity. Same thing. Uh, so how much uh, nickel uh, chloride I, I have uh, I measured five grams. So I have five grams. So I am putting this five gram nickel chloride here. Uh, this is five gram here, and then uh, so the, the this vessel is of two hundred fifty milliliter. So I am really saying two hundred fifty milliliter is equal to zero point two five zero liter, right? Yeah. So I divide by thousand and you get the one milliliter. Now convert this five gram into moles. So five gram into moles. So here you see one mole equals to two thirty-seven point seven. So I uh, put that factor to cancel this gram. So two hundred thirty-seven point uh, seven gram here, gram, and so one mole here. So gram gram cancel. When you divide five by this, you get the number of moles. So the number of moles is zero point zero two one. Zero point zero two one moles. Look here. Now you got the moles here. You got the liter here. Now divide moles by liter, and you get the molarity of the solution. Have you got that? Easy, right? So if you know how to convert a gram to moles and milliliter to liter, that's it. Yeah. So, so this is very important in chemistry. Yeah. So without knowing uh, how to make the molar solution, we cannot do anything. So moles divided by liter is molarity. I'll just go here. So we are just repeating the same thing. Yeah. So what mass of lithium carbonate is required to prepare 500 ml of 200.250 molar solution of uh, lithium carbonate? Now it is asking me to uh, calculate the mass. Uh, how how many gram of material I see? Uh, measure right so let's look here uh, so what uh, what mass of lithium carbonate so mass in gram how many gram of lithium carbonate i need uh, to prepare 500 milliliter of this many molar solution so, so again the more m means molarity so write the formula here molarity is equals to number of moles moles divided by number of liters right number of liters how many liters you are making right now Molarity, it's already given 0 0.250 molarity. So you need to make 0 0.250 molarity uh, and a number of moles is a mass. You don't know how many moles you need to measure, right? So we need to uh, calculate that. So number of moles, I don't know. Moles. But I know the number of liters. Number of liters is uh, 500 ml. So again, 500 ml is how many liters? So 500 ml. Okay, so one liter is equals to thousand milliliter, thousand milliliter. So I put this factor to cancel milliliter. So I put that thousand milliliter down and one liter up. So milliliter, milliliter cancel, liter comes, right? Make sense? Good. So what I need, I'm just putting that factor uh, in the upper part, right? So that's 500 divided by 1000 is 0. Uh, so 5 by 2, maybe 5 by 10, so 0 0.5 liter. 0 0.5 liter. 500 milliliter is half liter, right? 0.5 liter. So put that 0 0.5 here. 0 0.5 here. Make sense? Liter. Now let's cross multiply here. So this number goes here. So 5 mod 0.5, it doesn't have to be like liter also. So sorry, 0 0.5 here. 0 0.5 multiplied by 2.50 gives you. Uh, so I put that x there. You don't have to really write the x here. So I just I put just it here, and I would write the x mole also here. Yeah. 
it's the same thing. So 0 0.5 multiplied by 2.50 gives you uh, 0.125. So it's 0 0.125 moles x. So that's that many moles of lithium uh, carbonate I use. So this is number of moles. You can write x or you can just write the number of moles. Doesn't matter. It's the same thing. Yeah. So that many moles of uh, uh, lithium uh, carbonate I need, right? I just calculate the moles. Now I need to, because I don't have a um, uh, balance that measures the moles, so I need to convert that into gram, right? So let's convert that moles to gram. So this is moles. So one mole of lithium carbonate is equal to. So we are playing the same game over and over again. Gram to mole, mole to gram, right? So let's look here. So one mole of lithium carbonate is equal to. Uh, what is that? One mole of here. One mole of lithium carbonate equals to seventy-three point nine gram. So that's seventy-three point nine gram. So you can also calculate from that uh, periodic table gram. So I need to convert this mole into gram. So here I have zero point one two five one two five a mole. So I put this factor in such a way that I cancel the mole. So I need to cancel this mole. So I put one mole down here and 73.9 gram of here. So more and more cancel. So multiply this with this one and you get a number of grams. So that is 9.2 grams. So 9.2 grams. Got it? So if you go to the lab, uh, take the bottle of the lithium carbonate, uh, measure 9.2 gram of the uh, lithium carbonate and put that in uh, half liter bottle. Half liter bottle. So like this half liter bottle, so that's a, um, uh, that one, so 9.2 gram you are putting here and then dump water here up to this mark so that it becomes the 0.5 liter and then when you shake it and uh, it becomes homogeneous and the molarity of that solution is 0 0.250 molarity. Make sense? So uh, if you are making the, if you are trying to find how much mass I need, then you need to calculate first the mole because we don't have the relation of the gram to uh, molarity, right? The same thing here. So you, are, you can do yourself, try yourself, and answer is there, yeah? So uh, one mole of uh, sodium carbonate is already given. So try yourself, yeah, this thing. So let's do another one here. Now, from the salt, we know how to make the uh, molar solution. Now, how about this one? So let's say, so uh, I bought a chemical, but it's not a solid. I cannot measure in the, the balance, right? So I bought a chemical. Let's say here is a, uh, I, I bought a chemical. Uh, this is a bottle of let's say sodium chloride. This is a sodium chloride bottle, but this is not solid. I cannot measure in balance if they already send me in the liquid form. Yeah, liquid form, and they say, okay, in the label, they say, okay, this is a uh, two molar uh, sodium chloride. So they write two molar sodium chloride here. Yeah, make sense? Now, how do how can I make uh, uh, let's say I need a uh, 0 0.5 molar, 0 0.5 molar NaCl from my reaction. Make sense? I bought a this chemical and they say, oh, this chemical, this has a uh, water and sodium chloride, and the concentration of the solution is 2 molar. They say 2 molar, right? But I need, I don't need 2 molar, I need 0 0.5 molar, right? So um, 0 0.5 molar, how much I need? So this is the concentration I need. And let's say I need a, a 10 ml. So I need a solution 10 ml in uh, volume, and that has a concentration of 0 0.5 molar, right? So how do, how do I make that one? Yeah? So what I do is I do like this. So I have a formula. So V1 M1 is equal to V2 M2. V1 M1 is equal to V2 M2. So V2 M2 is what I, I need to make. Yeah? So I need to make. 10 ml of 0 0.5 molar solution, right? So I need this one. So V2 is 10 ml. I need 10 ml here 
and I I need to get zero point five molar five molar. And what is the molarity of my solution here? Two molar. So that's two molar here. So how much volume I should take here uh, so that uh, I can dilute it ten milliliter? Yeah. So we 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 calculate like this. So let's say V one is equal to two multiplied by ten multiplied by five, and then V one is equal to ten multiplied by zero point five divided by two, and you have five. So that's five multiplied by zero point five. That's equals to two point five. So I found this formula. I found that I need two point five ml. So what I do is from this from this vessel, I take uh, so I take the gravity cylinder here, like the gravity cylinder. You only need to uh, see this in the laboratory. So like this one, gravity cylinder, uh, and from this bottle, I take. 2.5 milliliter, 2.5 milliliter, and put it here. 2.5 milliliter, 2.5 milliliter. This solution I put here, and I add water to up to 10 milliliter here. So this is 10. So I dump water and make 10 milliliter. Make sense? So that's the purpose of this one. But if I had a sodium chloride, I don't have to know this thing. Because I just buy the sodium chloride and I need a uh, 10 milliliter and I will do uh, easily, I convert this milliliter to liter and uh, I know the molarity. So 0 0.5 milliliter uh, molarity equals, um, so molarity equals to milliliter by, sorry, the moles by, moles by, number of moles by, uh, Liter, so that will be 0 0.010 liter, and I, I will get the moles uh, after calculation here, and that mole I will convert into gram, and I will measure in the balance, and then take salt and put in the vessel, and I dilute, uh, dissolve, right? I will do that way, which I showed you previously. But this time, I'm not doing that. I just uh, bought this already liquid solution, so but I need a uh, uh, 0 0.5 molar 10 milliliter. So how much uh, I need to take from here and put in a gravity cylinder that measure 10 milliliter. So I need to take 2.5 milliliter here and put this solution here. Then add water up to 10 milliliter, and then uh, that's what my requirement is. Make sense? So let's do some of the problem here. Ask you then. How much time I have here? <laughs> a student gets 50 milliliter of 0.515 molar HCl solution to a 500 uh, milliliter volumetric flask and diluted with the water up to the mass. So let's uh, let's look what we say. So so what is it saying is that uh, he has a uh, that student has a student has a 50 gram of uh, so 50 milliliter of that much solution, right? So, uh, so he takes uh, from this bottle 50 milliliter. So that's a V1 is 50 milliliter into 50 milliliter. So he, he put he took that solution 50 milliliter, and then that solution has a strength of 5.515. So M1 equals to 0 0.515. Uh, molarity. Uh, so it's here. So listen. Now, where did he put? He put in a 500 milliliter volumetric flask. So that solution, he put in 500 volumetric flask here. 500, 500 uh, ml volumetric flask here. So this is V2. So what he did is he take from somewhere 50 ml of this stem solution and put it here and dump water to the mark to make a half liter. At 500 ml, right? Make sense? So where is that solution? Maybe in a bottle. So he has a he bought a he bought a bottle, bottle from the market, and that label say okay, this is a 0.515 molar uh HCL. It says that so it's a big bottle. But what he did is so he take a gravity cylinder and he found in that graph in the gravity cylinder 50 ml here, and that 50 ml he dumped here. Make sense? Now he is adding more water so that it becomes a 500 ml. Right? So 
now what will be the concentration of this solution now that uh, we need to find out so our formula is g1 m1 is equals to g2 m2 right this is the formula so v1 is how much it took 50 ml and what is the molarity of that solution 0.5 i15 and the v2 what is the that he he made the solution here 500 so what is the molarity m2 he doesn't know m2 so this number goes down here so that's 50 multiplied by 0 0.515 divided by this number <coughs> goes down 500 equal to m2 m2 left behind here so that's the molarity of the final solution debate any question so it's very simple so v1 m1 equals to v2 m2 yeah so v1 m1 is a, a, of one solution and the v2 m2 is of the final solution uh, yeah. So, okay. the same thing here. So, let's do this one and then uh, we just uh, finish. So let's, let's look at num uh, question number one here. So, I keep like this question a lot, and this question is homework number five. So, homework number four is already published. So, uh, you can try doing the homework four uh, now. So, this kind of question will be in homework number five. Yeah. So, uh, what volume of sodium, uh, sorry, what volume of 12 molar HCl is required to prepare 100 ml, um, 1 ml HCl? Look here, so uh, what volume? I don't know the volume, so that volume is V1. And uh, what is the concentration of that V1 guy? Uh, this is a, a 12 molar, so 12 molar, V1, M1 is equals to formula V2, M2. So what volume I should get? So I don't know the volume, but I know the molarity. So molarity I do. So V1 multiplied by 12 is equal to uh, to make 100 ml. So I need to make the 100 ml here. So 100 ml. And then what is the molarity of my final solution? One molar. So one molar. You see here? Now you just need to calculate the V1, right? So V1 is equal to 12 goes down. So V1 is equal to 100. Uh, multiply by 1, divide by 12, is equals to 8.5, 8.5, uh, ml. So if you take the 8.3 ml of that, uh, that guy and put it uh, another uh, 92 point something ml water there, and then you make 100 ml, that becomes the uh, 1 molar solution uh, have you got that? So, that's my All right, everyone. So, this is very important, yeah? So, just practice, though, and then.